We're here to remember a man born in 1934 in segregated Hillsboro, Texas, who at the age of 10 headed west with his family to California. He became an accomplished athlete, a university student body president, two-time Olympic decathlon medalist, friend and advisor to a might have been president, and he co-founded an organization that opened the world of sport to people with intellectual disabilities of all ages, which now serves 38,200 Special Olympics athletes in Southern California. His story is the classic American tale of hard work, heart, and determination leading to success, honor, and glory. Let's remember Rafer Johnson. His was a humble beginning with love and a few helping hands along the way. Perhaps this is what fueled him later and made Rafer such a champion for those who struggled to find a voice for themselves. And it gifted him with a profound sense of compassion and empathy and a desire for helping others. In 1952, his coach at Kingsburg High School, Merle Dodson, drove Rafer to Tulare to see the Olympic decathlon trials where he witnessed the defending Olympic gold medalist, Bob Mathias, break his own world record. It was then that Rafer began to dream that one day he too might also become an Olympic champion himself. When it came time for Rafer to choose a college, the first in his family to do so, offers came from across the country. For him, the choice was clear. UCLA was close to home, the campus's history as a school for athletes, including students of all races, his choice of an athletic or academic scholarship, and the clincher being coach Elvin Ducky Drake. The UCLA track coach told him, you can make the next Olympic team. Rafer became the first African-American to pledge a national fraternity at UCLA, and later he became president of the Bruin student body. Winning the Olympic silver medal in 1956 while competing injured in Melbourne only further fanned his flames of desire to win the gold at the 1960 Olympic Games. In the fall of 1957, his knee was now strong enough to play basketball. It was not only a good way to get in shape for track, it also started a lifelong friendship with coach John Wooden. Rafer was the first person of color to be selected as captain of a U.S. Olympic team, and he proudly carried the American flag and led the delegation into the stadium at the opening ceremony of the 1960 Rome Olympic Games. Ducky Drake was working with Rafer and his foremost competitor, C.K. Yang from Taiwan, and the clever coach was able to extract the best competitive performances out of both athletes with Rafer famously beating out his friend to take home the 1960 Olympic gold in the decathlon. Let me give a little Olympic perspective. The moment Rafer crossed the finish line and became the Olympic champion, his first reaction was to hug the silver medalist, showing Rafer's genuine spirit of sportsmanship. After trying his hand at acting and broadcasting, Rafer was looking for what to do next in his life. While accepting yet another Athlete of the Year award in 1961, Rafer met Robert Kennedy, and he learned they shared a keen interest in the civil rights movement. Becoming friends with the Kennedy families would lead Rafer down a new path. In 1968, he joined his friend's presidential campaign. Rafer was at the candidate's side when Kennedy was shot. Rafer helped apprehend his friend's assassin. The loss of his friend was a shattering blow for Rafer. Eunice Kennedy Shriver, Bobby's sister, had the tonic for his grief. Public service with the disabled community. She suggested that if Rafer wanted to honor the memory of her brother, he could help her to further the mission of the Special Olympics. Going to Soldier Field in 1969, Rafer saw people with disabilities who had previously been made to feel unworthy, and they were tapping into courage and strength that they'd never before been able to display. Their eyes were shining and their faces lit up with joy. So I've been asked to tell you a little bit about what Rafer meant to me and what he meant to Mummy. He uh, partnered with Mummy early on to make 
the California Special Olympics real. He made it happen. I don't know if it would have happened had Rafer not stepped up, stepped in, and most importantly, stayed the course. For me, uh, Rafer was a role model. He was a friend. He was somebody I admired, somebody I respected, somebody I really liked. I um, admired everything about him. I admired the way he walked in the world. I admired the family he built. I admired the husband he was, the dad he was, um, the public citizen he was, the human being he was, how he said no to things that weren't authentically aligned with him, how he said yes to what mattered, and how he showed up year after year after year. So what did Rafer mean to mummy? Um, that's for them to discuss up in heaven. I know they're laughing. I know they're talking about Special Olympics. I know they're thinking of ways to make it bigger and better. Rafer was one in a million, one in a billion. A year later, with a few friends, he founded Special Olympics California and dedicated his life to promoting acceptance, inclusion, and the well-being of these special athletes he loved so much. I became the best I could be because someone helped me. Uh, it, it, it's just that plain and clear. I wanted somehow to give something back to men and women and boys and girls who, who needed a little help. When Special Olympics came along, uh, Mrs. Striver asked me, along with some other of her friends, to meet with her. We talked about what worked for us and what might work in the program. Well, Mrs. Striver wanted the Special Olympics to be not only a social event, she wanted it to be an athletic contest, and that's what it is. Let's change the world, she said. Let's make it a better place for all of our citizens. My name is Paul Hoffman. I had just finished a speech at Summer Games opening ceremonies at UCLA. My friend Rayford Johnson said to me, you are a true inspiration to this program. People will follow your example because you speak from your heart. You will take this program very far if you speak up and speak the truth. Then along came Betsy Thorson. From what I see, he told her, you would be very easy to fall in love with. Who could resist him? Theirs is a wonderful love story. Of all of Rafer's inspiring, incredible accomplishments, he said he was most proud of being a cherished husband to Betsy, a devoted father to Jenny and Josh, and eventually becoming a loving grandfather. He once said, in the decathlon of life, family is the first and foremost event. Saturday, July 28, 1984, brought Rafer back to the Los Angeles Coliseum where, as the final torchbearer, he carried the 1984 Olympic torch up the 99 steps at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. He put the torch to the cauldron and ignited not just a flame, but a legacy that has endured for more than three decades. In 1984, I was 11 and Josh was nine, and we had no idea that our dad had been chosen to light the torch until the morning of the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games. And I just remember being so excited that we were gonna to get to witness him doing this. And seeing him go up those stairs made me so proud. And I'm not sure I really truly understood how beloved or how famous he was until we had that moment and shared him with the rest of the world. Rafer famously did not like cold weather, but on Tuesday, January 20, 2009, he braved the 28 degree temperatures to proudly witness the inauguration of the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama. The Rafer Johnson Humanitarian Award and the renaming of the Rafer Johnson Breakfast with Champions was established in 2009. The award is presented to a person who exemplifies Rafer's abilities to inspire others through personal performance, a proven commitment to those in need, and a high level of integrity and respect within their community. Rafer would place a personal call to the year's award recipient 
and we got the feeling that that personal call was the most coveted part of the award. Rafer returned again to the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for the opening ceremony of the 2015 International Special Olympics World Games, where he helped ignite the torch, opening the games, and welcoming 9,000 Special Olympics athletes from 170 countries around the world. I truly believe and can easily attest that I speak on behalf of all the athletes. Without Rafer, we will not be here today, simple and plain. It was not just our founder, it was our supporter and mentor. He made us feel included. Over the years, honors continued to be bestowed on our dear founder and friend. Rafer Johnson Junior High School was dedicated in Kingsburg, California. He received the Wooden Lifetime Achievement Award. And in 2016, the UCLA Chancellor's Medal. And in 2019, the dedication of the Betsy and Rafer Johnson track inside Drake Stadium at UCLA. Who can ever fill this hole in our hearts? We miss him so much. His wit, his charm, his stories, his humility and integrity, his quiet strength, his magnificent heart, and that slow winning smile that could light up a room. Rafer used to tell this great story about being at the track meet, standing next to a family, watching her daughter compete. When she won and stood on the podium, she looked over at her family and yelled, look, mom, I won. The mother began weeping uncontrollably. Rafer was concerned and asked her, is this the first time she ever won? The athlete's mother looked up at him and tearfully said, you don't understand. Those are the first words she ever spoken. We know he would tell you athletes that what matters even more than winning is to approach every challenge with total and complete effort, that you continue to strive to be the best that you can be and that you be brave in the attempt. The challenge we have ahead of us is to live up to Rafer's motto, be the best that we can be.